The following podcast includes a depiction of violence which may be distressing to some listeners. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Happy to have you with me. It gets lonely in here sometimes when it's dark and quiet. And there's no one for company except the strange and brooding spirits. But we're not staying here for long. We're on our way to Connecticut to visit a little house on an out-of-the-way dirt road called Chimney Pot Lane. If you're interested in country property, you might be interested in it. But then again, you may not. You see, the house is vacant. Not because nobody wants to buy it. The owner is afraid to sell it. I'd like you to meet two friends of mine, Jim and Marion Sage. They're a playwriting team who have just had a hit play open on Broadway. They've been writing for years, living frugally in a small apartment in Greenwich Village. And at last, they've hit the big time, as the saying goes. Their new financial security is making a dream come true. The dream of a house of their own in the country where they could enjoy life while they continued to write their plays. And that's what led them to Connecticut and the house on Chimney Pot Lane. I'm Mrs. Green. Can I help you? Uh, yes. You seem to be the only real estate agent in town, and uh, we're interested in knowing something about a house. Oh, sit down, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jim Sage, my wife, Marion. How do you do? Hello. We are the only realtors in this village, and we do have a lot of beautiful listings. We're interested in one particular house. We passed it this afternoon, peeped in the windows. It seemed to be empty, and we wondered if it's for sale and if you might have a key. We usually have our sign out in front of the houses for sale. Did you see it? Oh, no, there, there was no sign. Uh, do you remember where it was? Oh, yes. It was the end of a narrow road called Chimney Pot Lane. Chimney Pot Lane? That house? Yes. We fell in love with it, and we, we were hoping... That house definitely isn't for sale. Oh, dear. Why is it vacant, then? The owner closed it up and moved to Florida. Well, I thought houses were at a premium around here. The house on Chimney Pot Lane can never be lived in again. Well, now you're going to say that it's haunted. We're not generally given to superstition here, Mr. Sage, but things happened in that house that no one can turn their back on. Like what? We don't talk about it anymore, but... Uh, please. Well, there was nothing wrong until five years ago when a group of cultists moved into the house. No one knows what kind of things they were up to, but they left, and then things started. What kind of things? Well, the next family that owned it disappeared entirely. Just like that. I mean, water still in the tub, breakfast things on the table. Never heard from again. And, uh, there was more? The next owner just abandoned it. Wouldn't tell anybody what happened. And finally, Ed Hagen, who owns it now, tried to burn it down and, uh... Well, that was the capper. Capper? Now, the place wouldn't burn. Fire started in the kitchen. Burned for almost an hour before the fire department was notified. And no more damage than one kitchen wall. That house is bewitched. Can you give us the address of this Mr. Hagen? He won't sell. Oh, We'd at least like to ask. Very well. But you're wasting your time. Do you believe what she said? Oh, what happened may be true. But I don't think it's evil spirits. Uh, this is some explanation that no one wanted to look for. Uh, Want to swing by and take another look? Oh, I'd love to. Hey, Marion. Hey, uh, come around here. What is it? Look, the uh, boards are loose on this window. I didn't notice it before. You want to go in? I think we should. Well, Mr. Hagen's in Florida. We've got to see the inside if we're serious about mine. Let's go. Good. And I just thought it'd come off easy. Hey, there. There you go. And I give you a hand up. Not high. There. That's easy. Well, here. Here I come. Huh. We're in a, a pantry. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, light's, light's kind of dim. Light, come on. Hey, here's the kitchen. Ah, oh, that's where the fire was, huh? It was strange, wasn't it? I mean, that the whole house didn't burn? Well, I, st I still don't think black magic had anything to do with it. <gasps> Look how charming. A sunken living room. Hey, with a fireplace. Hmm. Paneling's in good condition, too. And a den, Jim. Look over here. Uh, yeah. Might make a good workroom for us. Oh, isn't it perfect? And a fireplace in here, too? Oh, I'm falling more <laughs> in love with it every minute. Hey, check that circular staircase, huh? I can't imagine a better place for us, Jim. Oh, let's see if we can get in touch with Mr. Hagen. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm ready to take it, evil spirits and all. And maybe we'll even write a play about it. Uh, well, let's get back to the city. I'll try to call Mr. Hagen tonight. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks very much, Mr. Hagen. Uh, we'll have our attorney handle things. Thanks. Goodbye. It's ours? Well, that was Hagen's son. Old Mr. Hagen died last year. His son's only too glad to get rid of the house. Well, how long will it take? A couple of weeks, maybe. Uh, I'll get Fred to handle the details. Oh, I hope we're in by Christmas. I'm going to ask Georgia to give us some advice on the decorating. Broadway's number one set designer ought to have some good ideas for a country house with a resident evil spirit. Isn't it beautiful, George? Oh, it is. I've got a dozen ideas already. I would suggest cutting through the pantry and combining it with the kitchen. Uh, take a look at the den, George. You know, we want something dramatic in there. Okay. Oh, isn't this cozy fireplace bay window? Well, we're thinking of some sort of bold wallpaper. You see, that one wall is so... Uh, unbroken, mm -hmm. yeah. Something dramatic. Hey! Hmm? I've got it. How about a photo mural? Hmm, not a bad idea. Got something in mind? I do. You want a little flair. I think I've got just the thing. What? A jungle scene complete with lion, birds, ferns, vines. That sounds exciting. Do you know the photographer Elliot Mann? Uh, no, no. Well, he's an old friend from college. He's been in Africa and took some incredible shots. One would make a terrific mural for that wall. Well, let's take a look. I'll borrow some slides from Elliot. I think it might be perfect. It would certainly be unique. It's really sensational, George. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I was having some doubts that it might be too overpowering. Oh, no, I love it. It makes the whole room seem larger. Yeah, it's like having an indoor garden, you know, with all those vines and ferns. And that lion on the rock. And the tropical birds. Oh, it's so dramatic. <laughs> I can't wait for the housewarming to see people's reactions. Oh, by the way, I'm bringing Elliot to the party. He's anxious to know how the mural turned out. Great. It'll be nice to meet him. Uh, it's a week from Saturday, you know. You two have certainly done wonders in the month and a half you've been in here. With your help. Well, the place was in pretty good shape. <laughs> you haven't met up with any of those celebrated evil spirits, have you? No, not a one. The house is as normal as we are. <laughs> you know, where there is something evil or psychic or whatever, you can usually sense it. We haven't felt anything but happiness in all the weeks we've been living here. I'll get it. Georgia, oh. come in. Oh, it's starting to snow. Oh, I said snow and freezing rain. Wow. Uh, Mary, and this is Elliot Mann. Uh, hi. Nice to be here. I'm delighted you could come. And we love your photograph. Oh. I guess you know that. Well, I'm happy it worked out so well. Come on in. Meet everybody. Mm. And we'll show you how the wall looks. That is impressive. The details held up beautifully in the blow-up. Yeah, yeah the, the feeling of realism is incredible. Everybody's talking about it. Well, I'll never forget shooting that photo. <laughs> the stupid lion attacked us a second after I snapped. Chased our car for almost a mile before he gave up. Well, you have to expect those things when you gallop around in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the animals weren't as dangerous as the natives. They were a wicked bunch in that part of the bush. They're headhunters, primitive, superstitious, and utterly ruthless. I'll say in the good old USA, thanks. They refuse to be photographed, if anyone's foolish enough to get close enough to try. Why? Well, it's a common belief among many primitive people that the camera captures their soul. 
they're deathly afraid of cameras. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Needless to say, you didn't get any shot. Oh, not of the headhunters. It wasn't worth the risk. Hold on a minute. Hmm? I think you might be mistaken, Elliot. Hmm? What do you mean? Uh, I've never noticed it before. We've had the mural up for two weeks, but I just didn't see it till now. Look, through the leaves down in this corner, it's the face of a man. Let me see that. Oh, it's a face, all right. You probably didn't know he was there when you took the picture. He couldn't have been. There wasn't a native for ten miles around. Anyway, I would have seen it on the slide. Well, maybe the blow-up brought it out. It's just a trick of the lighting. You're right, Marion. It does resemble one of the Bushmen. When you stand back, it looks like a face. It's just the pattern of the leaves and ferns. There's no real face there. Oh, yes, I see it now. It looks like the real thing to me. Well, you probably can find lots of images in those leaves. The dappled sunlight does it. Well, looking for things in the mural will give Jim and me something to do when we hit those writing blocks. Uh, Marion, some of the gang's starting to leave, and they're worried about getting back to the city in the storm. It's turning to sleep. Look at it out there. Yes, I'm glad you invited me to stay the night. Well, I'd better start back, too. I'm leaving for Wyoming in the morning. Oh, it's a shame to wind things up so soon. I wish we could put everybody up. You better not wait any longer, Elliot. It turned to sleet, all right. It's a fairyland. Everything is ice. The sun on those trees. It's fantastic. And we're without a phone. The branches are down all over the place. I'm, I'm going to town. Oh, the joys of winter in suburbia. <laughs> I hope the crowd made it back safe last night. Well, I'm sure they did. I'll be back as soon as I can. I've got to get the phone company out here, and then I'm going to get a haircut. I'll see you later. God carefully, dear. Let's take our coffee into the den, Georgia. Okay. I'll stir up the fire. There's some embers left from last night. Oh, it really is beautiful out there. The scene through the bay window almost looks like a painting itself. Georgia. What? Look over here. The face I saw in the leaves last night. Hey. Where is it? But that's what I mean. It's gone. <laughs> Morning, ma'am. Your phone company. Yes, come in. I saw you working on the wires. That was fast. It, well, I was in the area when I got the call. Weather like this keeps us busy. Oh, I can imagine. Well, I've got to check the instrument now. Of course, this way. Phone's in the den. Would you like some coffee? No, no, no. Thanks very much. i got to get gone when I check you out. Okay. The phone's right in there. Thank you. And if you change your mind about the coffee, just say so. It's already made. Hey, right, thank you. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. uh, operator, this is Maxwell checking uh, 0419. Right, right, okay. Uh, let me get that down. 41 chestnut caught. Okay, I'll head there next. Right. <clears throat> What's that? What, what is this? No! Get back! Get, get back! Goodbye! No! Did you hear what I think I heard in Jim and Marion's den? Perhaps we were mistaken. What really happened, of course, was that the phone man turned around and saw... Well, come to think of it, what did he see? Perhaps we'll find out about that and more about this house on Chimney Pot Lane when I return shortly with Act Two. I'm happy you've returned. You see, as your host, I have to be here. And after what I heard a few moments ago, I just as soon not be here alone. Thanks for your company. I suppose you heard it, too, that ominous growl right in the middle of a pleasant Connecticut home. And it certainly gave our telephone repairman a turn. He couldn't believe his ears or his eyes. But then, here on Mystery Theater, lots of things happen that are hard to believe. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? 
Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, he was here. It... Just a minute. Yes, his truck's still in the driveway, so he must have gone outside again. All right, I'll have him call right in. What's that all about? Phone company. They want to talk to the repairman. Did you see him go out? No. <laughs> I left him in here checking the phone. That was at least half an hour ago. That's right. We've been talking in the kitchen. Jim came home. We wouldn't leave without his truck. I wouldn't think so. He must be outside. I'll look. I'll come with you. Jim! Did you see anything of the repair man when you came in? No. Ross' truck's out there. I don't know where he is. Well, come on. We'll have a look. Telephone? A phone man? Are you out there? Hello? I would have answered. I just don't know where he went. I'll call him back and tell him. I thought he might be in the basement, but uh, he isn't. That's strange. He, he, he's not here, but where would he go without his truck? It's been two hours, and the truck's still there. Oh, there's a car pulling in the driveway. It's a police car. What in the world? It must have something to do with the repair there. Jim, the police are here. Yeah, I see. There's someone with them. You better go out, Jim. They're looking at the truck. Well, that other man must be from the phone company. Hello, officer. Mr. Sage? Uh, yes? Uh, I'd like to talk with you for a minute. Well, of course. Come on in. This way, officer. Uh, this is my wife, Mrs. Sage, and Hello. a friend, Miss Kane. Well, how do you do? Uh, I'm Officer Rich. Is the repairman still missing? Uh, that's right, Mrs. Sage. I'm sorry to have to bother you like this, but I have to ask some questions. <laughs> I really don't know what to tell you. When was the last time you saw Bob Maxwell? When I showed him into the den. Mm. He'd been outside and he came in to check the phone and I left him alone. And then Miss Kane and I had our coffee in the kitchen. That's right. And you were here, Mr. Say? No, no, I was in town getting a haircut. Uh-huh. So the last person to see Maxwell was you, Mrs. Sage, hmm? Yes. Uh, may I see the den, please? Sure. Sure, right this way. It's uh, right off the living room. Thank you. Uh, the operator says Maxwell checked in with her at 9.42. She gave him instructions for his next stop. And that's the last anyone heard from him. Or I take it saw him. But I left him right here. Oh, in the... wow. <laughs> that's some wall. <laughs> yeah, a friend of Miss Kane's took that photograph and we oh. had it specially made to fit the wall. And... Uh... Neither of you heard or saw Maxwell go out. No, but we were in the kitchen. I mean, he could have left without us knowing it. Well, I don't know what else to ask. We don't suspect foul play, obviously, Mr. Sage. But uh, this house, well, it has had a reputation. Oh, we've been here two months and haven't had one single strange thing happen. Until now. Oh, now, look... Don't tell me you think that anything... Well, I don't know what to think, Mr. Sage. It wouldn't be the first time someone disappeared from this house without a trace. <sighs> yeah, so they say. I have to admit superstition has no place in a police investigation, except that this man isn't around, and his truck is. And my wife was the last to see him. Exactly. <sighs> well, we're as baffled as you are, officer. Well, I'll make my report. We'll see where we go from there. The phone company's taking the truck back. Oh, and Mr. Sage, if anything out of the ordinary should happen, something that would give us any kind of clue, you'll let us know immediately. Hmm? Of course. Put another log on the fire while you're up, Jim, will you? Uh, right, and uh, I'll freshen the drinks. Oh. Oh, this is so warm and cozy. I wish I didn't have to go back to the city tomorrow. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. You know that, Georgia. Oh, I know, and I appreciate it, Marion. Oh, here you go, Marion. Uh, Georgia. Thank you. Well, it's been quite a weekend between last night's party and uh, today's little episode. It's so curious about that man from the phone company to disappear like that. Well, he certainly didn't meet with any foul play here. Marion. What? Marion, I've been looking at the mural. It, it it seemed to me the the lion had his mouth open. 
like he was snarling. Yes, I think so. Yeah, well, look at it now. The mouth's closed. And his head is raised as though he were sniffing the air. Yeah, I, I could swear the lion looks different now than he did when the picture went up. Well, maybe it looks different. We don't remember. But it can't be different. <laughs> Listen, when I get back to the city tomorrow, I'll look at Elliot's original slide. Yeah, yeah that's an idea. Well, that ought to settle it. Fascinating the way the firelight makes the foliage seem almost to sway. Mm, hypnotizing. Yeah, that's probably why we think we see things that aren't there. Like the man's face I saw last night. It was gone this morning in the daylight. Uh, you know, there's more in that picture than meets the eye. Looks like we'll have no end of fun with it. I'm back. Uh, George, is train coming on time? On the nose. Well, I'm making coffee. Uh, let's get started on that fourth scene today. Oh, I was hoping to. I'll be in the den and bring in some donuts. They're in the bread box. What in the world was he doing over there in his bare feet? Oh, well. The place needs a good going over after that party. I'll clean up tomorrow. Yeah, I was thinking we ought to open scene four in the hospital waiting room rather than Millie's apartment. Jim, you shouldn't walk around these cold floors in your bare feet. What are you talking about? Your footprints on the floor over by the wall. I... I wasn't in here in bare feet. Well, <laughs> those are wet footprints, aren't they? Where? I didn't see it. They were right there a second ago. Damp footprints across the rug. A man's bare foot. Well, it couldn't have been. I haven't been in here at all since you drove Georgia down the station. Much to less than my bare feet. It wasn't my imagination. Well, I didn't say it was. But the prints weren't mine. But I think maybe we've let the tales about this house get the best of us. You know, last night, I thought I was seeing things with the lion. You thought you saw a man's face. And now you think you saw wet footprints. Now, the lion couldn't change, huh? We're just reading things into it. Come on, let's get to work. Hello? Marion, it's Georgia. Hi, Georgia. Listen, I've meant to call you for days, but I've been up to my ears in work. I went over to Elliot's and looked at the slide. Oh, yes, we were wondering about that. Must have been the firelight. The slide's the same as the wall. The lion has his head in the air and his mouth is closed. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> it hasn't changed. That funny, we should have thought that it was different. How are things with the house? Did that telephone man ever turn up? No, not that we know of. We haven't heard. By the way, Georgia, could you come up this weekend? Jim's going to Philadelphia to doctor a new tryout. I'd love the company. Sure, I'd love it. I need a break. <gasps> Georgia? Hold on a minute, will you? Sure. Yes, it is. Georgia? Yeah, what's up? The face is back in the mural. What? I've been staring at the wall while we've been talking. It's there. The whole outline of a bushy head and face through the ferns, like the one I saw at the party. Elliot said that was a trick of the lighting. But remember the day after the party, it was gone. You didn't see it again, you mean? Yes, <laughs> that's what I mean. See you Friday. I'll be up in the afternoon. Who's on the phone? It's Georgia. I'll call and let you know the train. Good, I'll meet you. And Marion, relax. <laughs> I will. Bye, Georgia. Good idea to have her up here for the weekend. I'll be back late Sunday afternoon. I... I hope. Georgia says that the lion in the photo slide is the same as the wall. There's no difference. Oh, well, I was expecting that. Yeah, we're letting our imaginations run away with us. Leave the dishes, Georgia. Let's have some brandy by the fire. Oh, you don't have to twist my arm for that. Oh, probably Jim. He said he'd call when he got to Philadelphia. Oh, he made good time. Well, bring the coffee into the den. The brandy's in the liquor cabinet. I'll be right in. Say hi to Jim for me. Hello. Hi, honey. Huh. I thought it would be you. <laughs> How are things with you? Just finished dinner. Everything is all right, isn't it? Of course. Well, I'm glad George is there. See you Sunday. We'll be here. Bye, darling. I put on a fresh pot of coffee. It'll be ready in a while. Now, how about that brandy, hmm? 
Oh, yes. It's in the lower cabinet and the glasses are there, too. Oh, well, let me get them. Nothing like a swirl of bread. Well, now, where in the world did this come from? What is it? It's a feather. A blue feather. <laughs> I don't have anything with feathers. Where was it? On the floor. I picked it up right here. Exactly under that bird in the mural. What, what, what do you mean? There has never been a feather in this house. I can't stand them. You think that... Oh, Marianne, it can't be. Look at the bird. Look. That feather is from that bird in the picture. Oh, now, Marion, come on. You've got me doing it. I, I could swear I saw those ferns move. Where? Over there in the right-hand corner. What is happening? You're crazy. You do hear drums. Yes. We've got to get out of this house. I don't know what it is, but we've got to get out. I knew there was something about that picture. Come on, Georgia. Hurry. Marion. Marion, look. It's moving. Oh, some audience is coming into this house. Run, Georgia. Run. Well, the big cat is out of the bag. Now we know that all those things Marion was seeing, the face of the man, the different face on the lion, and most recently the feather, weren't figments of hers or anyone's imagination. Something strange is happening in this house on Chimney Pot Lane, and I'll join you there shortly in Act Three. I told you I'd meet you back at the house on Chimney Pot Lane, but I'm afraid... That's not where we're going now as we begin Act 3. Hey, did I say a moment ago that something strange was happening in Marion Sage's den? Strange? It's downright terrifying. Run, Georgia! Run! It's attacking! Get this way! Run! It's going to kill us! What is happening, Marion? What is it? I don't know. We're surrounded by the jungle! Keep going. Oh, dear heaven, what's happening to us? It's so slippery. I... I... Oh, Georgia. I tripped on that vine. Let me help you. Oh, it's all right. He's turned back. He, he, he's not following us anymore. Where are we? Where's your house? I don't know any more than you know, George. We're in the jungle. How? Oh, why? One minute we were looking at the wall, and then here we are. This has got to be some kind of hallucination. This is not happening to us. The time you tripped over is real enough. Your ankle is bleeding. I hadn't even noticed. That you're right about moving. It's so dense. Which way do we go, and where? I... I can't move another step. I'm scared to death. I want to lie down and go to sleep and wake up from this nightmare. There seems to be a path leading off that way. We have got to keep moving, Marion. Come on. George, is that smoke? Yes, it is. Up ahead. The path. Well, I never thought about it. What? This path has to be made by someone or or something coming and going. Let's see what you mean. Try not to make a sound. We're coming to the top of the hill. Stay back a bit. Watch out. Look down there. It's a, a village. We're on the road into town. Look at those people. It's just like the man I saw in the, the picture. Look at the top of those poles. Are they? Let's go. Come on, back down the path before they see us. Who far do you think we've come from the village? I haven't the slightest idea. It's so hot. It's humid. I can hardly breathe. We're going to have to find some kind of shelter. I think it gets so dark. And there's no telling what comes out at night in this place. Georgia? Huh? Listen. Sounds like water. It is. Up ahead, a waterfall. They said we could get cooled off. Oh, it should be fresh for drinking. 
Oh. 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 Yeah. Don't get too close. Those rapids are full of rocks. So cool. Marion? Look over there. On the other side. What do you see? It looks like a cave just under the bank. Yes, I see it. It might be a safe place for the night. Here we are, down on the rock. Yeah, I'm okay. It seems to be a, a good-sized opening. It's so dark in there. Maybe the, Maybe there's something in there. Oh, wait, my cigarette lighter in the pocket of my slacks. At least we'll know what we're getting into. Not bad at all. It's like a large room. Someone's had a fire in here, too. We're not the first tenants, George. There's some kind of animal lying over there in that corner. What? We better get out of here fast. It's not moving. George, don't go any closer. What's the matter with you? Marion... Uh, the telephone repairman. Uh, what? Get back. Get back. I got a stick. You? We're, here. We're, women. Two women. You're the... You're the phone man, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, oh, really? Oh, this gets worse all the time. You're the lady with the crazy wall. Yes. The same thing happened to you. What happened to me? I was fixing the phone and all of a sudden a lion leaped out at me and I've been roaming around in the jungle. I, I, I just don't know how many days. That's what happened to us. You've been here a whole week. <laughs> Is that how long? I've been hiding from animals and headhunters and eating berries. There's no telling how long we'll all be here. Is there any way back? We hope so. But we just don't know where to look. Every part of the jungle looks like every other part. Uh, not so. I, I've been here longer than you now. There are certain spots uh, that are really different. In what way? Well, I've come on places where the foliage looks almost fake. Now, now there's one spot where they, they, there are more birds. Now, they, they all seem to gather together. I saw this bird sitting up in a tree. And all of a sudden, it, it flicks its tail, you know? And a big feather flies out. And right before my eyes, it, it disappeared. It just disappeared into thin air. The feather? Was it blue? Well, it could have been. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. And I know where it landed. Can you find this place where the birds gather? That may be our way back. Uh, I think so. It's uh, downstream away. What do you mean, Georgia? The blue feather we found on the floor of the den. It must have come from that bird. We were standing inches away from you, Mr. Maxwell, and neither of us knew it. I, I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. No, you couldn't. But if we can find those birds, we might be close to getting out of this... this whatever it is. Well, it's too dark to try now. But, uh... We could in the morning. We must in the morning. Is it much further to where the birds are? Uh, you see that clump of tall trees in the distance? Well, it was just to the right of them that I saw the birds, and uh, down below was where the ferns and things looked different. But do we have to go that far? I'm exhausted. What's that large, dark area up ahead? Uh, that beats me. And must be a bog or something. You know, it looks to me as though it's moving. It does. It's sort of rippling. Uh, it might be quicksand. I, I don't remember seeing it before. It must stretch for miles. Can we get across it? Uh, it depends on what it is. I think it's... It's moving toward us. Look. It's spreading like a big oil slick. It's moving, and it is headed toward us. I'm trying to find and tell what it is. We, we, we better turn back. We're too late. Oh, good Lord. They're ants. Millions oh. of ants. <laughs> Run. Run this way. They're all around us. Take your legs. Run back. What are we going to do? Keep moving. Get them off and don't Get do anything. Get them off. 
Get, get away, you devil! Get, get. My hair! Come on, fast! One chance! Get to the river! Run! Hello? Jim? Who's there? Uh, Elliot Mann. Oh, hi. Hey, what are you doing outside? I, I just drove up. Uh, Georgia told me she was spending the weekend. I wanted another look at that mural. <laughs> no one answers. I guess the girls are out. Uh, probably antique hunting. They said they were doing that today. Come on in. Uh, huh. Door's open. I'd like Marion to leave without locking the front door. Well, I got back a day early. Say... Strange. Mm -hmm. All the lights are on. It's, it's, it's only it's only one o'clock. Yeah, it looks like they were having a party. A coffee and brandy. Elliot. Elliot, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Marion would never leave the den like this. Hey, that's, that's curious. A blue feather. Where did that come from? It was on the floor here. Marion doesn't have any feathers. This is from a tropical bird. I want to know where Marion and Georgia are. We're, we're almost to the river. I don't think. No. I don't think I can go another step. No, you can. No, no. Come on, come on. We're, we're ahead of the devils. It's just a few more yards. That's it. Into the water. We're safe from them now. It's not far to the other side. Just follow me. Here. 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 I'll help you out. Here. I'm out. I'm out. Thanks. Oh, any idea where we are? No, not anymore. I'm, I'm going to take a look over the top of the bank. I'm so tired, George. I think I've got it. Oh, no. No, you're not. We're going to get out of this. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. All this wandering around and being chased for nothing. Marion! Through the ferns. Is that a man? Crouching? Yes. It's one of the headhunters. Well, there's nothing familiar on top of... Look over there. There's a headhunter looking at us through the ferns. Oh. What'll we do? Stay still. He's alone. There he goes. He's running away. Yes, he's probably gone for help. We'd better get out of here before they get back. They know this place better than we do. We'll never escape them. Look, I don't want to end up on one of those poles. I wonder if we have any choice. Elliot. Hmm? Look. Look there. In the lower left-hand corner of the wall. What? A face. I swear. It's a woman's face. Where? Through the ferns. But... It's gone. It was the perfect outline of a woman's face. They're on their way. They'll probably try to circle around us and cut us off. They'll find us. They'll kill us. We have got to keep going. We can't. We can't get away from them. We can't. Up ahead. Look. The birds. That's the spot I told you about. We might find we might a way. No. No. Oh, I spear. I'm hit. No, oh. help me. He's hurt. Oh. Past those trees. Past the tree. Uh. Past the tree. Uh. There it is. Lord, uh. Arian, help me. We've got to help him. Uh. Drag Maxwell, well, take your arm. Hurry, please. We found it. Lord, help us get there. Please help us. Jim. 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 Marion. We're coming through. We're here. Oh, help him, help him. It's the phone man. A spear in his back. The headhunters stop them. Do something. There's one thing that might stop them. My camera's in the car. I'll be right back. deathly afraid of this. I captured more than their souls when I took that picture two years ago. Going back. You see me. All right, you devils. I got your souls once before. I'll get them again. There. 
They're disappearing. Look. The whole photo mural just going. It's fading away every time you shoot. I, I don't believe my eyes. I don't believe it. The wall is white. There's not a trace of the mural left. No one could explain what had happened. Had Elliot captured not only the souls of the natives, but the very soul of the jungle itself? Had the supposed bewitchment of the house brought it to life? Who can say? The mural is gone now, and so are Jim and Marion Sage. They put the house up for sale and bought a townhouse in the city. The last I heard, they still hadn't found a buyer. I happened by the house on Chimney Pot Lane a few weeks ago and peered through the windows. Curious. There was a pantry where I thought Jim and Marion had put in a breakfast nook. And one wall in the kitchen looked burned by a fire long ago. Well, perhaps they'll find a buyer soon. Any takers? Our cast included Marion Seldes, Terry Keene, Earl Hammond and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Thank <laughs> you.